right, new project today on the 2012 Focus. And this applies to all 2012 to 2014 Focus, and the 15 and up is similar. The difference between the 15 and up is they took away the power unlock button here and moved it out to the doors where it should be. But what I'm going to be doing is replacing this whole factory radio with a aftermarket uh, Android navigation system. And these are a little bit harder to find these days, especially the latest ones, but I bought this directly from a company and I'll leave a link in the description below. So we'll see how it is. It should be a pretty easy project to remove the radio up here. There's a couple of bolts under here that have to come out and then this whole thing pops out. We'll have to transfer over our vents to the new system. Should be pretty much plug and play. The only thing that's gonna make my installation a little bit longer is the fact I'm going to be adding a backup camera at the same time. So I'll have to run that wiring from the back of the car to the front. So the first step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the old stereo here and then I'll show what we're dealing with in the back. All right, so underneath the radio here, there's this little piece of plastic. You need to wedge a screwdriver up under it and pry it out. And then just that little piece, it covers. There's a couple of torque screws here that we'll take out. And that's really all that's holding the radio in place. It's just clipped in at the top. All right, so this is just a T20 Torx. We'll work these out. All right, once those are out, you just want to pull. As you can see, the whole thing pops out. Behind here, you'll just need to undo this one wiring harness, and then the whole front will come off like that. All right, and then we need to remove the radio itself, which is this piece here. So just undo two bolts in the top, and then it will slide out. And then we should also have to remove this screen here. And as you can see, there's just a couple more. These are all the same T20 Torx bit to get all this out of the way. The factory radio has to be completely removed. All right, so we're just opening the box in the new unit here. Some paperwork, get out of the way. This is the box that has all the wiring harnesses and such. Here's the actual unit itself. So I just kind of lightly set it in place. See what it's going to look like. Looks pretty much just like the factory Sony My Ford Touch system would look. Alright, now to transfer these vents over to the new unit, there's a series of clips here, here, all along that you have to carefully unclip and not break. And then you can clip it back in to the new unit over here. Also, there's these silver bezels on the front that have to be unclipped and transferred over. So just on both sides, there's clips. Just take your time. Don't break any of these and switch everything out. All right, so here's everything. Removed it from the old one. Got our vents here. You have to be very careful. This is a little tedious to get these out. But as you can see, once you get them out, they'll just snap in onto the new stereo. But I'm going to wait a minute, plug everything in, make sure it all works first. So here's the dash opening once everything's removed. We'll mount our GPS antenna up here under the dash. I'm probably just going to put it on top of one of these vents right here and secure it, and it will work through the plastic. You don't have to put it on top of your dash or anything. So that's for the GPS antenna. And then everything else, uh, they include all the adapters and everything to plug into the factory wiring. If you had satellite radio, you just need to make sure they give you an antenna adapter. You just need to make sure you use the correct one. Don't use the satellite antenna, use the radio antenna. I'm pretty sure it's the black one. I'm gonna double check on that first though. And besides that, it'll just plug in and work. But like I said, I have to run a wire, um, an RCA wire to the back for the video camera along with a power wire, so or the trigger wire, we'll call it. But I'm going to hook everything up real quick and just do a test to make sure everything works. So everything just plugs in. You will plug th this one into that top piece that went to the top screen. 
Um, there's your two other main connections to get plugged in here. Uh, all, here's your connections here. It does include, this is a speaker for if you have sync, you can retain it. That they include. And then a lot of connections on this harness here, which plugs into the back. This is all your audio, video out in, rear camera in. Uh, it says there's a wire here, camera power. So to see how that works. And then obviously your brake, if, if you have that set up. Um, you can just ground that out. Antenna connection, which would be, uh, you know, if you needed an amp or an external antenna. Here's your rear camera. And you'll have to connect. There's a little CAN bus interface that comes with this right here. And two of those white pins get connected into that. So we'll go ahead and hook this up. Get everything else plugged in and turn it on and see what happens. I right, get everything just kind of loosely connected. I'll turn it on and see what happens. That's a good sign so far. We're booting up. Now the first time it boots up, it's going to take significantly longer. This does have the fast boot feature, so every time you boot up after this, it'll be pretty much instantly turned on. Well, that's a good sign. We're into the screen here. Got some sound. Make sure these buttons work. Good. All right, so give me a minute to configure everything and I'll be back. All right, so everything works. Um, pull it back out now. I'm going to hook up a few other things. One thing is this wire that says cam power. This actually sends 12 volts out when you put it in reverse. You don't need to hook up anything else. So we're going to just run this wire back with the video cable and this will be what we use to supply power to the camera and we'll just ground provide the ground back there on the hatch um, so that, that's pretty convenient that it has that um, like I said it's all controlled over the CAN bus network all your reverse signals so the only other thing we'll have to connect in this wire in my case will be it says in here back in right here so this camera wire so we'll connect that and then the other thing we need to do is worry about the USB. Um, so far, I have not got sync to work. If I press the, the voice button here on the sync control, uh, it does bring up the screen on the unit for sync, but it doesn't say anything. So there's obviously something I'm missing there or not doing something right with that. So I'll check into that. The one big problem with this unit is it comes with absolutely no instructions at all. So, but everything else does work. It actually shows you on the screen if you open a door. Um, so there is some, you know, communication with the car's computer that's going on. So I'm going to get everything tidied up here, get my backup camera run, and I'll get it all installed and we'll go through the software. I figured out how to get sync working. You actually need to connect. There's a harness that comes out of this side of the can box here. And it says auxiliary right and left end. You actually need to connect that to this other harness on the stereo for your aux right and left end. And when I did that, now if I press the steering wheel control. Sync, please say a command. Cancel. So it does work. Uh, I'm just kind of curious what this is for. I do have it plugged in to where it goes. On the harness, it comes out of, I'll show you. It's these two green wires right here. They plug into that, so I'm not quite sure what that does. Obviously to me it looks like a speaker of some sort. New stereo comes with this adapter cable here. And what this is is um honestly once you get this new radio installed, sync becomes kind of pointless. I mean they make it so you can still use it, but obviously with an Android stereo you don't it replaces all the features of sync. So 
This is an adapter cable, and the factory sync module is located, it's way down underneath uh, these controls here, but way down here. The easiest way to get to it is through the side, down here by the pedals. I just pull the plastic out a little bit. I was able to reach up in there. I'm not going to be able to show you, but this right here is plugged into the bottom of that module. And what this is, is the factory uh, USB connection, and which is in here. So I want to be able to use that USB port um, to plug my phone into, to either charge or to do Android Auto. So I'm going to plug this into the USB port on the new radio. And how you do that is with this adapter cable they give you right here. It just goes right into there, and then you plug it into the back of the stereo. So just one other little thing to keep in mind. All right, so back in the back of the car, um, to do the backup camera, I took all the trim pieces off. And most of them are just clipped on. But there is four bolts that are seven millimeter that are here on these handles on the tailgate lid. So after you take those out, the rest of this just pops right off. And then you just pop your button out by prying it out with a small screwdriver and then you'll release this connection here. That's for the button and the light that normally shine on your uh, backup or your license plate. So here's that factory button light combination. Here's the one I bought on Amazon. I'll put a link below. So it does plug right into that, and then it's got your output for your camera, which is right there. It's just a little dirty. So it's pretty nice, pretty neat. Uh, it'll look factory when it's done. So basically, all I have to do now is I'm going to go through this hole here, just drill a small hole and use a grommet to pass the camera wire through. And then the fun part. I'll run the wire down and around. The hard part's going to be getting it from here down through this here. That's going to be the really challenging part, I'm sure. So I'll work on that. Once we get the wire fed through there, we can run it down the side, up the side of the vehicle to the front. So I drilled a hole, got the wire run through, comes down and around here, makes a connection here, ran a ground wire here, and then it goes down. Snake it through here with a uh, you know clothes hanger and put that back. Then I've got the wire coming out here. Instead of just running it down the side, I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough wire. I'm just gonna try to run it under the headliner and make it cut it as an angle towards the front pillar of the car, and I'll run down that way. So I've got it pushed through here. So I'll try to pull the wire, and then we'll keep on moving towards the front. Pulled through to the front. I'm gonna put all the trim back on and we'll be ready to get everything buttoned up up front. All right, back up here in the car. Make sure you take out, there's two screws here and here that keep the DVD drive secured in place. Make sure you take those out before you're done. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the other USB port, and I'm just gonna put this in the glove box uh, in case I need to plug anything else in, or you can plug like a flash drive or something with all your music, have it stuck on there, so. Once I get that all done, we'll be ready to start tucking everything in and buttoning it all up. So here's the cable that runs from the back for the video camera. We'll obviously plug that part right there into the camera in, and then this red wire only will get connected to our camera power wire. So we'll just connect that, solder it, tape it up real quick. And the ground, as you saw, I hooked up in the back of the car. So when we put it in reverse, it'll put power over this wire to power the camera back there. All right, I just got to put my vents on. I'm going to do that real quick. But just one thing to remember, once you start tucking all your wires and getting everything in, do not forget to connect this connector here. They don't give you a lot of room. You're going to have to push the radio all the way in. And then it'll go into that little white connector there. That's what controls your power door locks and your hazard switch. So just don't forget to connect that before you button everything up. While installing the unit to put the vents in, you do have to cut these tabs, cut these little pieces of plastic out. You can see 
on the factory one, there isn't anything there. And the vents won't fit in if those are on there. So just take a pair of uh, wire cutters and just trim out these little pieces of plastic first. That way your vent can fit in. All right, the hardest part, without a doubt, of this whole install is getting that wire connected for the switch right here, without a doubt. Uh, it took me about 10 minutes. I had to loosen the harness a little bit up back there to get the wire to come out a little bit further. But anyway, the last piece, we'll just put this little trim piece back in under here. All right, and there we go. So now I'll walk through the software with you real quick and show you what all this thing can do. Put the key in, turn on the ignition. Our uh, steering wheel controls work. Turn the radio off for a minute. All right, so initial impressions. Uh, I saw people had complained about this. I see what they mean. The screen is angled a little bit forward. Uh, it would be nice if they would have set the screen like this, just a little bit more. Uh, I don't think it'll be a problem seeing it. It's just it would look better you know, if the screen was a little bit more up and down. But it works all right. It's easy to pair this to your phone. Like I said, uh, it seems that sync does work, but I don't think... I haven't been able to figure out how you could pair your phone uh, or do anything that requires something besides voice commands. I'll give you an example here. We'll go hit the sync button. So, cancel. Cancel. All right, so sync, it works, but there's no way, none of these other buttons, when you click these, they don't do anything. So there's, I don't see any way to actually get into the settings to pair a phone. So you don't really need sync though, and here's why. Like I said, we already hook the USB port up, so it'll go right into here. Um, if you wanna stream music, there's your Bluetooth connection. It will show you all the artists and everything. You can stream from your phone directly. Uh, that's in your, this app's called A2DP right here. Um, you can set up your phone. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Right here in this Bluetooth. There's where you set up your phone. It shows you how to pair it. You know, all your contacts, settings, recent calls, everything will be right in there. Um, there is an internal microphone built into the head unit. I'm going to try just using that. It did come with an external microphone if you wanted to put it somewhere else. But I don't think it's really necessary. It says there's an infrared port, but it did not come with a remote the controls, you can go directly to the radio. This just switches your sources. Um, this is a spot where you can put in a map card. This did come with iGo Primo, but it's just on, the, I guess, the drive because there's no card in there. Here you can put another micro SD card just for storage or if you got some something on there. The dim button is kind of nice. When you're driving at night, you can turn the screen off. Uh, navigation goes right to your chosen navigation app. Like I said it comes with this iGo navigation on it. Uh, I usually just use Waze or Google Maps if I have cell coverage uh, with a Wi-Fi hotspot. But it's a good idea to have a map program installed on here like this that does not need a data connection. That way, if you're out of coverage area, you can still use it. And this one uses the here maps, which is just the same as like Garmin and everyone else. So we'll go ahead and get out of here for now. Uh, like I said, we got the radio. You can put a USB DVR on here as well. You can play video through your thumb drive and whatnot. Um, you can obviously go to the Google Play Store and download anything that you know you would normally install. You get the Play Store, YouTube, 
that's the stuff that's already in here. Uh, DAB Plus is a kind of like an HD radio, but in Europe, unfortunately, this does not support HD radio. It would be neat if they built that in. But the rest of the world uses this. And here in the United States, we use HD radio, so we're kind of unique. You can install TPMS, aftermarket TPMS sensors that will directly interface with this unit. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't plan on doing that though. This has the factory TPMS system. Now watch, if I open a door, it will sh actually show you on the screen that you opened the door. Now uh, the hood's open. It does show you the hood's open. It's just locked out right now since it's been open so long. But if you open the tailgate, whatever, it will show you, which is kind of neat. Uh, you can tell it's definitely communicating with the car on some level. Uh, if we, oh yeah, there's the temperature. So it actually is reading your factory temperature, which matches what's going on there. Um, you can change uh, obviously your brightness settings as the graphic equalizer. You can go through different presets. The sound on this is decent. It's not the best I've ever heard. Uh, it's about on par with the factory stereo system. It's definitely not like an aftermarket Pioneer or anything. I do have another Android system in my F250 that has amazing sound, so I was a little disappointed uh, by the sound quality on this unit. But it's not, like I said, it's not bad. It's just as good as factory, if not better. In a Focus, it's just not as great as it could be. Um, in the settings, there's a bunch of other stuff. You can set your, uh, your keys here. And right now, they're set to only come on with the parking lights. So if I turn on the parking lights... Just takes a second. It will dim the screen and it will turn on the keys. And you see, I've got them so they light up white right now. You really only have two options. You have a dark blue, which does not match the, the teal color of the factory. So they advertise this as being RGB, which means all colors. It's not true. This is only white or blue or anything be between. And you cannot make it match. I tried playing around with it for a while. So I figured I'd go with the white to match the, you know, like the numbers and everything else, everywhere else. Um, in your settings, it's all your normal. If you're familiar with Android settings, like your networks, Bluetooth, etc. Oh, I just hit the eject button. Your display settings are just, you know, wallpaper, um, night display. I'll show you, you know, control your brightness. Uh, let's see. Sound, just some different volumes, your key tone. You can set default alerts, just like Android set, setup. Screenshots, storage, security and location. None of these are really per, uh, apply here. Now, car, this is where you get in a, a little more interesting. So your element, like I told you, where you can try to change your colors. Don't be fooled, though. You can't change your colors. Uh, amplifier, I already showed you that. Navigation, you can set your default navigation app and it will automatically mix the audio. So whichever navigation app you're using, make sure you set it in here. Uh, driving settings, allowed to watch video while driving. You know, you don't really have to hook up the bypass wire because you can just override it right there. Extra settings. All right, so shutdown delay, which would be when it goes into a complete shutdown, if you pick auto sleep, it will only shut completely down if it needs to because the battery is about low or the battery is running low. Otherwise, it'll keep it in standby mode, which is where you probably want it. Um, reversing mirror, reversing volume. This is kind of neat, reversing volume. You can actually, when you put it in reverse and your backup camera comes on, you can set it to turn down the audio a certain amount. That way, you know, it's easier to pay attention while you're backing up. You can turn on the uh, rear view ruler, they call it, but my camera has a built-in. So if I put it in reverse, you can see that comes on automatically. Um, if you turn on the rear view ruler, I'll show you what that does. It adds overlays another one on top of it. So even if your camera didn't come with one, you'll have that built in. I don't need that since I have that. You can switch the reverse battery voltage display. If you turn that on, it'll show you your actual battery voltage up there, which is kind of neat, I guess. 
Let me that on. Uh, factory settings. I don't know. You only want to mess with these if there's something you need to do specific. I'll show you how to get in there. Brings that up. You have to put in a password. Password is one, two, six, which is very standard. Hit done. Okay. And here you can configure other settings. Um, you don't really want to mess with these app settings. You really could screw this up in here, so be careful. You can set a custom splash screen. I was kind of surprised to find that this, this one only has this option right here. Um, so if you want to add like the Ford logo, you're going to need to go into the, uh, and upload a custom picture for the Ford logo, which I'll probably end up doing. Um, here's where you can set your radio. Mine came on Europe, so I had to come in here and just change it to America one for the radio. Um, if you find that maybe your Bluetooth isn't matching your, uh, FM or your AVN, you know, if the volumes aren't consistent you can turn them up or down to match in here just make sure you hit apply and exit before you're done to save your changes and it will restart the system here's your canvas system you can change the type that it is um, obviously we want it on focus because that's what we're in i didn't have to mess with any of that so we're not going to mess with that we're going to leave it alone um, key study you can change what all of these do in here um, so Panel key study, hit the nav button. It'll bring up the different options. I don't want to mess around with all this though, because uh, we don't want to change anything. Other settings, uh, you can change the uh, brightness. Um, you can change, oops, we don't want the front camera. Panel type, they have it RGB, it's not. You can control whether the headlights turn on, the button lights, or whether they're on all the time. Uh, really don't want to mess around in here too much though. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. That's basically it for the software review. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you is probably the coolest feature of the stereo, and it actually isn't even a feature of the stereo. This will work on any Android stereo now, but. It did come with a built-in app that I noticed. It's called Auto Kit. And what that does is that enables Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on this head unit. And this is something, like I said, you can do on any new Android head unit or any newer Android head unit. But you need a little dongle like this. And I got this one on Amazon. And there's a couple different ones you'll see uh, out there. They're all basically the same. Um, but there's two variations. There's a white one and a black one, and they use a different app. It's a very similar app, but they will not interchange. So all you do is I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to plug it into the USB port, the factory USB port that we connected. So that dongle is now plugged in. You can see there's a light on on it. And that made something come up on the screen here. So we're going to click use that for default. And then if I open this, now I'm not going to plug anything in yet. You'll see it opens this app right here. Please connect the phone. You have a couple of the settings to look at. Go from into the settings. You can set um, some different things. You can just pretty much all leave all of these stock. Um, automatic start, system icon. Let's see, driving position on the left. Uh, you can check for updates. Basically, this is the app that change that uh, allows Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to work. So, if it's nighttime, I'm a little disappointed. The only thing I'm disappointed in this program is at night you have to manually come in here and put it into night mode. But hopefully, a future software update will fix that. So now, if I take my USB cable, all right. So I've got cable plugged in and all you need is Android Auto installed on or Apple CarPlay which is built into Apple devices. I'm going to go ahead and plug my USB cable into my phone. And you'll see that it goes to connecting and it says Android Auto on the screen. As you can see you now have complete Android Auto 
So you've got your your mapping, as you can see. Um, you've got your phone functions, which you need to pair the phone over Bluetooth to the head unit, and everything in your phone will work. You got your audio, you can change what it uses. Right now it's playing Pandora, it automatically started that. And then this is how you would exit back into the system. So if you're familiar with Android Auto, it's the, it is the full Android Auto, it works great. Uh, you don't necessarily need it with this head unit if you have a Wi-Fi connection, but what's really cool is if you don't have a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, or you don't wanna go through the trouble of trying to enable it every time you get in the car, all you have to do is plug your phone into the USB port and you have all the benefits of Android Auto with your music, your mapping, uh, your favorite apps, your ways, etc. playing on this head unit, which is really cool. Uh, your buttons, you have Tune, obviously, which is for the radio, up and down, left and right to change tracks. This is the volume. If you press it once, it'll mute it. Okay. Uh, like I said, I basically went through all these already. But uh, you can press and hold it, which will actually shut the unit off. Press it again, it'll turn it right back on. All right, well, I hope this video tutorial on how to install this unit was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I will get back to you if I can. Uh, please like the video if you enjoyed it, if it helped you out, and subscribe to my channel for more. If you want to look down in the corner of the screen, you'll see other focus videos on some other modifications I've done recently. We'll see you next time.